Oh, hey, what's up, everyone? Just rocking out with my favorite new power station. No big deal. She's running the entire camper back here. <laughs> oh, so let's get that down. Anyways, I wanted to do a video, uh, a revideo, reviewdio, review on the Max Oak Blue Eddy Powers. Oh, the logo's not on that side. Hold on. There we go. The Max Oak Blue Eddy uh, 1500 watt hour portable power station that I'm just amazed by. Stay tuned at how you can get $290 off if you buy one of these through Down to Mob. It's running the entire camper here. We did some tests on the Dodge Mahal with it and it passed with flying colors. But I have a few critiques and things to say about it. So, uh, excited to review this in the video today. Why are we chit-chatting? Let's get started. Pew. This is so right now it is plugged in to my new A-liner A-frame camper trailer Temporary home on wheels. So if you haven't seen why I bought that check out the video I'll try to link that in anyways uh, talking about this power station. So um, Lithium power station if you recall in the Dodge Mahal we had 125 amp power AGM deep cycle battery so lithium is far superior and this is a bigger capacity uh, so I had high hopes of this thing running this entire camper and we did some tests on the Dodge Mahal before we tested on this. So let's jump back a couple weeks when we still had the Dodge Mahal. We'll take a look at those tests first and then I'll show you how it's doing on this. All right, so we fully charged it from the wall. We know because that little guy's green. So let's plug it into the panel and the fridge. Voila! It's got a thousand watt sine wave inverter and an MPPT solar charge controller and it can take up to 500 watts of panels, all in this little package. It certainly is a little package um, when you consider the size of an inverter, a solar charge controller, a lithium battery, fuses, bus bars, wires, relays, blah, 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 blah. Um, this covers it all. All you gotta do, buy this thing, plug a solar panel into it, plug stuff into it, and run it. So right now in the rig, the battery is down here. Um, the solar charge controller is back here. There's wiring all over, taking up like this entire space here. And if you come down here, you'll see there's the so the inverter. Um, look how big that bad boy is just in itself. So this would take up a lot less space. What we're gonna do today to test this thing out, I'm gonna plug my fridge into this bad boy. I'm gonna plug my Jackery Solar Saga 100 watt panel into this bad boy as well. That's the only panel I have right now that will plug directly into it um, without some adapters. I could plug the panel on the roof into this bad boy, but I just have to you know, unplug some wiring and things and I'm just gonna leave this camper all ready to go for Jeff. Um, but anyways, we're gonna plug it. I got a CFX 95, so it's like the biggest Dometic fridge you can get. It's about 10 a.m. This thing is fully charged uh, off the house, so we're gonna plug it into the fridge. It's gonna draw down a lot, getting that fridge cold because it's um, it's not been plugged in for a few days. So I'm here at a house, um, and we're gonna plug the 100 watt panel in right away and put it on the roof. But I always like to tell you guys why I chose to review a product. That's why I chose to review this product is because. It's so compact and it has everything you need right here. Uh, this is very similar to like a Goal Zero Yeti um, or you know similar power stations like that. But uh, I really like how this thing's laid out um, and like vertical and it seems like it would fit uh, more places nicely. The, you can see on the front here, you've got the DC, you got four USBs and then this is your input for your solar um, and then you just hold her for a few seconds and the display turns on. You hold the DC for a few seconds, that turns on. You hold the AC and that turns on and powers the AC ports. The only thing that's kind of weird is the AC ports are in the back here um, next to the fan. Uh, so that is the only thing that you might have to think about, you know, having access to those when you set it up. But let's plug it all in, see how she goes. Wow, so. This is gonna fit just perfectly in there. So that's cool. You could easily there we go, and let's get this fridge fired up. 
All right, you can hear the compressor starting to fire up. You can see the fridge is drawing 42 watts. So let's plug the panel in and throw it on the roof. We got this handy dandy hatch. We're just gonna put the panel up there, flip it out. This is just sitting right on top of my other solar panel. So yeah, for more of a permanent setup, of course, we'd hook it into the 250 watt panel that's up there. I just wanna test this out for a day or two for you. Uh, with the 100 watt panel. And luckily the cord is just long enough. All right, so we plug that in. Now let's see what kind of inputs we're getting. Full charge right now. Um, so yeah, we'll come back and see where she's at in a little while. I plugged this thing in at 10 a.m. It's now 5.30. So let's see how it's doing. I checked to make sure the fridge was still on maybe four or five hours ago and it was. And there it is, she's still on. She's at perfect temp. As you can see, but how much does our battery have? Look at this, you guys. It's fully charged. The battery is fully charged. The battery's at 100%, and it's 5.30. I'm stoked. Well, I guess we'll just leave her overnight. And this is a 100 watt panel. This thing can take up to 500 watts of panels. So if you have two or 300 watts on your roof, you'll be fine. The next day, you know that because I'm wearing a different shirt, really. And I mean, come on, I wouldn't lie to you guys. All right, well, the fridge is on, so that's good. So, <laughs> yes, it's at three quarters, not even, it's only got well, so it's got one, two, three, four, five bars. That's the only thing I wish it just had a percentage personally, but it's still easy enough to read. So, it's got five bars, it's still at four out of five and I unplugged the solar panel last night at like 6 p.m. when the sun had went down. It's 9.30 in the morning right now. I think I'm gonna leave the panel unplugged and we'll just see how much this fridge drains. Alrighty, six hours later, let's see how she did. Power station's on, fridge is on. <laughs> Four out of five bars still. What? That is impressive. Alrighty, so we will see you guys tomorrow. Alrighty, well, it's been about 48 hours since we last had this thing plugged in to solar or anything that's gonna charge it. Bada bing, bada boom, the fridge is still on. And we have three out of five bars left. Holy cow, so it's only taken 40% of the battery. This this thing would run, so this thing will run this fridge for like four or five days without any charge on any solar or being plugged into any shore power. That's impressive. Uh, the system in my truck right now would maybe run it for 24 hours with no charge. Okay, so I'm impressed um, after testing on the Dodge Mahal. Now this trailer's a whole other story. I've got this hooked up right now to a Jackery 100 watt solar panel and the Blue Eddy Max Oak power station. Now I've got this hooked up to the camper a little bit wackadoodle, but I'll explain why. So right now the camper is plugged in to AC, uh, just like you'd plug it into a home. So. Already, we're taking DC power from the panel, converting it to AC in this power station to go into the camper here. Then, unfortunately, once it gets into the camper, we are actually still running that AC power to the fridge, which is good. I can run this fridge off of AC 110 or 12 volt. Uh, so when I switch it to AC 110, it draws a lot less wattage. Um, other things inside the camper though, like the lights, the water pump, it's got to convert back to DC power. So this is not the most efficient way to be using this system. It is the easiest though, because again, you just plug and play. So I'm testing it today to see how well it works. Um, and right now, you can see here, the fridge is already up to temp, so it's Overall, the fridge is the main thing drawing power, uh, and that's about it right now. We're drawing about 122 watts, so this fridge is not very efficient, as you can see. And we're bringing in 73 watts in the panel. 
So we're almost powering the fridge from the sun, which is cool. Um, but of course, this battery will go dead eventually. Now with the Dodge Mahal, as you saw, it'll run that fridge at a max, about 50, 60 watts for about four or five days with no charge um, on here. I think the price is pretty spot on. It's a $1,400 unit. You but can get like some... I said in the beginning of the video, you can save 290 bucks on this thing if you click the link below to go to Amazon. So check it out, I'm on Amazon right now. And as you can see, they've got a $150 coupon already there. But when you enter code down to mob there and click apply, let's see what happens. Oh, wow. Look at that, you get another $140 off. $290 in savings. And at the end of the day, you guys, if you're running a 125 amp hour solar setup, so this inside has, again, a lithium battery, which you can spend $1,000, you're gonna spend $1,000 on 125 amp hour lithium battery anyways. Um, when you factor in the 1,000 watt uh, MPPT, or sorry, when you factor in the thousand watt sine wave inverter um, and the MPPT solar charge controller, fuses, wiring, you're gonna spend more money setting up your own solar setup. Like, I almost guarantee it. The Sun Raider, I bought $2,500 worth of solar. Um, it had a little bit higher capacity, but uh, I mean, it's just crazy how much money you can spend on solar. So anyways, as far as cost goes, I actually think, number one, it's gonna save you money. Number two, it's gonna save you time in building your system. And three, it's probably gonna save you weight. And four, probably space. Um, the only downside to a unit like this, the, which is again, very similar to Goal Zero, Jackery units, um, if something in there fails, what do you do? you start taking it apart and trying to fix stuff, that's scary. Uh, if you set up your own solar system um, and it stops working, you can diagnose the problem a lot easier. You can fix your solar charge controller, you can fix your inverter, yada, yada. So that is the biggest and in my opinion, only downside to this system is troubleshooting if there ever were any problems. Now I haven't had any problems yet. It might last a long time. I'm gonna put it to the test. I'm gonna be running this camper primarily off of this. Uh, and I'm gonna be living in this camper for a few months until we build a new truck camper. So I think it's a wonderful system. Be sure to check it out. I've got some links below where you can see it on Amazon. Comment, let me know what you think. Of course, we want you following all the videos. So hit that subscribe. Only question is, are you down to mob off the grid with Max Oak? <laughs> Oh, <laughs>